Come on, Vincent. Let's come get in the video where people can see you. Come here. Come on. Good bird. Good bird. Give me a kiss. What a good bird. What a good bird. Look, there's food. You see? Yeah. I know it's still so scary, isn't it? You see the grapes? I know. You don't want to go. No, don't put me on there. Are you going to fly away if I try to put you here with the grapes? No, just sit there. Good bird. The people want to see you. The people of YouTube want to see you. There's a peanut in there, too. All right. Whew. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to take the glasses off because I know there's a glare on them when I wear them with the light. All right, so for those of you who have been asking where's Vincent, there she is. She can finally come out because my mom's dog is gone. She's pretty well used to that, but you saw that she was a little nervous. That's why she was flapping her wings. She was trying to get away from it, but it won't hurt her, so she can sit there. All right, hi YouTube. Um, I'm Autumn Beckman, and this is my channel. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. This is Vincent. If you're not familiar with her, I have put her here. She's made a lot of noise in some other videos, and some people complain about her, but most people love her. So what I'm doing now is trying to have her on this little perch here where people can see her, um, but keep her mouth full with food, so maybe she won't make some of the loud whistles that bother people so much. I have a Q&A for you today. It is my very first Q&A, and what I did was put up a call for questions on Instagram a few days ago, and I got a few questions, so I'm gonna go through and answer those. If you have any questions for me that I don't answer in this video, please leave them in the comment section below, and maybe I'll do another Q&A in February next month. All right, let's get started here. Quite a few questions to go through. The first is from um, Narelli or Narel Lu, Narelli Lu. Sorry, I'm mispronouncing that, I'm sure. Uh, she has a few questions. Question one, oh, and by the way, I'm using my Create 365, the Happy Planner. This is the big eight and a half by 11 size. I just wrote down all the questions here. Her first question is, what would you have done career-wise if you weren't a teacher, i.e. your dream job? So the job I always wanted when I was growing up and the thing I worked toward through college was being a Disney animator. And I specifically wanted to work for Disney because I loved their movies growing up. Um, I went all through school. I went through an arts high school, a fine arts high school here in Houston called the High School for the Performing and Visual Arts. And I studied, um, they didn't have animation, so I studied painting and drawing and photography there. And when I went to college, the first college I went to, because I went to three different ones, um, the first one was the School of Visual Arts in New York City. There were two colleges that had animation. Um, well, two that were like the major animation schools in the country. One was SVA, School of Visual Arts. The other was CalArts in, I think it's in Burbank, California. I had always wanted to go to CalArts, and these were the only two schools I applied to, and I got into both. But CalArts didn't offer me any scholarship money, and SVA did so I went to New York. So that is the career that I wanted and I went to SVA for animation. It was traditional animation where you hand draw everything and what I discovered was that it was very tedious and uh, more mathematical than I was interested in. So um, I wasn't, I lost interest in that and I thought maybe I could be one of the designers that designs characters and and scenes and backgrounds and stuff. Um, but yeah, I never really followed through with that. I just kind of lost interest after the animation thing. And I also had to leave that school because it was way too expensive. And I came back, it was gonna be something like $100,000 for those four years. And that was just definitely not something we could ever afford, even with all the scholarships I did have from the school and from other places. I had a lot of scholarship money and it barely made a dent in the, um, the tuition there. So I came back to Houston, I took a year off of school to work, and then I went back to school and I went to the University of Houston, got a degree in painting, and also double majored in psychology. And that's where my second uh, sort of dream job career path came in, and now I'm in a third. So I studied psychology and then I went to graduate school uh, to be a social psychologist, a research psychologist. 
learned a lot from that, but also figured out my first semester there that it's not what I wanted to do for a living. I stayed in it anyway. It was a doctoral program. Um, I got a master's out of it. I didn't get the doctorate because I did not do my dissertation because I had just lost interest and didn't want to spend another year or two doing it. So um, then I decided to teach, which I had thought about before when I was at U of H, but got out of it thought you know maybe I'll do psychology instead and so now I'm back into teaching so that's been my my path to the career that I'm in now I love the job that I have now it, it I'm back in art and I can use my art skills and my psychology skills working with children um, so yeah I really love what I'm doing now I'm very happy and have no interest in changing careers at the moment I'm also at a very wonderful fantastic school and I have a supportive administration um, we have a very strong fine arts program at our school. Question two, also ultimate purse bag if there was an unlimited budget. Um, the ultimate purse bag, I mean you always go straight to the Birkins, right? And I think my screen just flashed so I'm looking over it. Oh sorry Vincent. Um, so if money was no object I'm sure I'd get a Birkin of some sort. Um, uh, as far as Louis Vuitton bags, I mean, I'd, I'd get the whole thing. I'd get the Birkin, I'd get, you know, I do like the Kelly better actually, but I, if money was no object, I'd get all of those standard, you know, top of the line dream bags. So the, the Birkin, the Kelly, the Chanel double flap, um, I don't know what size, the, um, the Louis Vuitton bags I have pretty much all the the classics, the Speedy, the Neverfulls, those bags. I do still want a an emprunt bag from Louis Vuitton, but I don't know exactly what I want yet. I haven't found the one that like I have to have. I was thinking the Montaigne GM, but that is $3,500, so realistically that's out of my budget. Um, so now I'm thinking maybe the Speedy 30 in the emprunt, but hmm, we'll see. So that sort of answers the question. I One thing I don't do is spend a lot of time looking at a lot of different designers and like I'll, when I'm looking at handbags I tend to be on the pre-loved sites looking at what's available so I'm not looking at um, things that are outside of my budget so I don't even know if that answers your question because I don't do enough research. Um, and then last one, why did you start your channel? And love your vids by the way, thank you. Um, I started my channel because about two years ago I discovered YouTube and discovered that there were luxury handbag videos on YouTube and that there was this whole world of luxury handbag videos and it just spoke to me because I'd always loved handbags. So I started watching these videos and <clears throat> then I thought, well I have you know information once, once I started buying the handbags too, once I started buying Louis Vuitton thought, well, I, I, can, I can contribute to this. I can make videos like this, and I would enjoy doing it because I enjoy watching them so much. And then I thought, yeah, but who wants to hear me talk, and what do I have to add to the conversation? And Wendy, uh, at the time she was Wendy S. The Loving 50, now she is Wendy's Loving Life. And she said in one of her videos that, because somebody had asked her, I think in a Q&A, whether they should start a channel. And she said to anybody who's interested in starting, just start it and do it. And so that was actually what encouraged me to start my channel. And I have reached out to her and thanked her for that inspiration. Um, so yeah, that's why I just, I thought it would be something I enjoy and it has been. I've been doing it for almost a year now and I'm trying to treat it more like a job at this point. It's one of my New Year's resolutions just because I need to be more consistent. I want to put out about two to three videos a week. So yeah, that, that's why I thought about doing it, just for fun. Um, the next question was from Grace in Our Handbag. Hi, Grace. Question one, do you have any purchase regrets or do you sell and move on? So I do have some bags that are up for sale on eBay right now. None of them are Louis Vuitton. I've only sold one Louis Vuitton item and that was a little PM Agenda in Epi Vanilla color. I just wasn't using that. I had two PM Agendas at the time and I still have the other one, the one in the red vernis, that's Palms d'Amour. 
That one's beautiful. I love it. The Epi I just wasn't using, so I sold it, and I didn't have any regrets about selling that. Um, regrets about buying, I do from time to time, but I tend to put um, so much thought into buying something because I don't have a lot of money to throw around. I, I can't afford to just buy bags on a whim. So I do a lot of research and I make sure that I really want it. I'll wait a week or a month or a couple of years even in some cases um, to see if I really want it or if it's just a trend and if I'll lose interest in it. And that's one of the things with Louis Vuitton. I've been into that brand been interested in that brand for many years. So when I finally started buying them, that was one of my justifications. It's like, this is not just a fad for me. It's something I really enjoy and want to have and want to have several pieces of. And the bags that I buy um, are bags that I love. I love the, the classic shapes and all this. I've talked about that before in, in other videos. So yeah, the ones that I have up on eBay are some other brands. I have a Furla bag, I have a Michael Kors bag, a Fossil bag, and I'll put the link to my eBay store, whatever it's called, down below so you can check them out um, if anybody's interested in seeing what I have there. And I need to do a vlog sale too. I'd much rather sell through my channel than through eBay because it's kind of expensive selling through eBay. Um, they charge fees and stuff. The reason I have those bags up for sale, I still like them. Um, it's just that once I started getting my Louis Vuitton bags about a year and a half ago, it's how long I've been collecting, I just don't reach for the other bags anymore. I feel like um, there are... When I have carried other bags, I often don't like I miss my Louis like I don't feel as good or something which is weird and stupid and I don't know but then lately I have felt like I do want to carry other bags and actually I'm going out this morning after I film this video to Henry Bendel to buy a handbag that I looked at yesterday that I've been thinking about and I'll unbox that one later this week because I have a few more videos I want to put up before then um, so yeah regrets not so much regrets it's hard for me to sell things because I worry about regretting selling. Um, like I have, do I have it here? I have this Louis Vuitton bandeau that I have thought about selling and I've thought about selling my Trevi GM, but I haven't been able to bring myself to do it because I feel like I'll regret it. And I feel like I will miss it and then if I want to replace it then it's expensive to replace um, and it would take me a while to save up the money but yeah I could like write an essay on all of these questions I think so Grace says uh, question number two do you try and keep your YouTube channel a secret from anyone in your real life I'm curious because it's something I worry about that is a great question so I don't keep it a secret but I don't go around telling people about it um, I was trying to keep it under wraps at school, I didn't really want the students to learn about it because um, we have this thing in Houston ISD and I'm sure other ISDs have them too, other school districts, where you're not supposed to interact with students on social media and you certainly don't you know, friend them on Facebook or anything like that. And it's just for privacy issues and because you know there have been all these scandals with teachers and students and stuff. So I didn't want to advertise that. I didn't want students, I teach middle school and you know kids and people in general not just kids can be mean. Um, I didn't want to put myself in a situation where students would come on and start making negative comments or something. Um, so I was keeping that under wraps but students have Google and they Google their teachers so within a few months of last semester, which was the first semester that I had my channel, kind of. It's the first semester that I was really serious about using my channel and, and posting videos a lot. Um, students found out about it, of course. So now I have at least one that I know of who is subscribed, and I let my principal know about that just to be transparent and everything. And yeah, so that's the only thing that I've done to not to hide it from anybody. I don't try to keep it a secret, but I wasn't advertising that at, at work. 
And then I don't have a lot of friends who are into handbags, uh, so I don't talk about it with other people either. I find that a lot of people think that, you know, luxury bags in particular are pretty frivolous. And I tend to say that to people when I do talk about my channel, um, that, you know, oh yeah, or, or my boyfriend will do that. He'll tell people when we're in a social situation, he'll tell them, yeah, she has this YouTube channel. And, and I'm like, yeah, but it's about handbags. It's really frivolous. Like, I don't play it up at all. I really play it down because I don't want people to think that I'm um, materialistic. I never have been. I just really enjoy handbags. That's my one material vice. And uh, anyway, but yeah, but I'd be curious to know, Grace, why you want to keep it a secret. And is it about judgment from other people or what? Um, I know some of it's privacy issues, but yeah, I'd like to hear your take on that too. All right, next question is from, uh, is it, did I write something here? Is it J Lux Lab Life or is it Lux Lab Life? I made some little mark. I'm not sure if that's a J or a comma or something. Um, question one, why is the absolute, what is the absolute max limit you would spend on a single bag and why? Um, in reality, with my budget the way it is, I, it would be hard for me to go above 3000. Um, it's hard for me to go above one or 2000, but you know, seeing that I like Louis Vuitton, they're typically between one and 2000, the canvas bags. So I do want an on prompt bag. I know I'm going to have to go higher for that. And that I expect to spend around 2000 or somewhere between two and three. And I'm willing to do that for the right on prompt bag. Um, it would take me a long time to save up for that though. If money was no object, then money would be no object for a bag either. I, you know, depending, if I was some kind of billionaire and there was a hundred thousand dollar handbag I wanted, I'd probably buy it. <laughs> so it's ridiculous, but yeah. Um, I'm not in that situation though, unfortunately. Question two, also if you could have your dream trifecta of any bag and all three LV canvases, what would it be and why? This includes bags that are not currently offered in all canvases, such as the Alma and the Noe. So right now, I'm really loving the Speedy, and I have, oh, I took it down. I have my Speedy 30 Dom Mirabin, and then I have my Speedy 35, this vintage one. I'm thinking I might like to get a newer, not a brand new, but a newer uh, Speedy 30 in monogram. And the um, Dommier Azure print, I have one bag I have a Neverfull in that, but that's my least favorite of the prints, but it's only because I don't wear light colors much, and I feel like I need light colors to wear that bag. Um, I think it's a beautiful print, it just doesn't work with my wardrobe very often. So... But I could see having a Speedy in that and carrying it around. Um, it's probably kind of a boring answer. The Speedy is it's the sort of typical bag, you know, classic. And maybe I should pick something more interesting to have in all three. But right now, that's what I'm really loving is my Speedies. Um, so that's what I'd pick right now. Next question is from Meticul Meticulous Key. Do you plan to purchase other, other luxury brand handbags? All my luxury handbags are LV, but I would love a Celine bag. So I am planning to get into Chanel this year. I talked in, I think it was that luggage tag video I did with the fake luggage tag that I thought was real. Um, I talked about how I went to Louis Vuitton and then I went to Chanel after that and I looked at some of their little card and coin cases. And I think I'm gonna buy one in a few months um, or within the next few months. And I'll go to the store and get it because it seems to be cheaper to buy those at the store than it is from Fashion File. And the real real doesn't seem to have them very often. So I do plan to get that. I won't be able to afford a Chanel bag unless I save up for a long time. It'd probably take a few years. And that I would have to buy pre-loved because I can't justify spending four or five or six or whatever thousands of dollars on a brand new one. Although I'd love to, you know, if I could afford it, I'd love to buy a Chanel bag at the store so it's new because I feel like the weather, the, the leather doesn't wear all that well. Um, 
at least on a lot of the pre-loved Chanel's I've seen, there seems to be a lot of wear and the poofiness goes out and the corners get scuffed and things like that. Um, but if I can find a Chanel in good condition a few years down the road when I can save up, you know, 3000 to buy one. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. I, I've also thought about, you know, while I'm thinking in that price range of the two or 3000 for the Louis Vuitton Empreinte, I could maybe get the Chanel around there, but that wouldn't get as much use because it's a smaller bag and I need bigger bags for my lifestyle. But then I've also seen some Hermes bags that are in that price range that I like. Um, the Garden Tote, I like that one. And, oh, there was another one that I saw the other day. I don't remember the name of it now. But there are some pre-loved that you can get in that price range. And I like how simple the Hermes designs are. Um, sort of minimalistic. So I like that. As far as other brands, I need some Gucci in my life. I love, love, love Gucci. I've loved them for years and I don't have any handbags in Gucci. And I've had a few chances to buy them pre-loved, but I always go for Louis Vuitton instead. And I'm, I'm really good with my Louis Vuitton collection right now, so I'm ready to start branching out. I just need to figure out what I want. Um, yeah. So specific handbags, I don't know names so much. I'd, I'd like one of the leather Gucci Soho with the, has a leather strap and then a chain. It's kind of a big tote bag and it has the big GG um, kind of embossed on the front. I like that. And there's a, a few other ones, like the Blooms collection. Let me go to the next question. It's from M. Lee MCD. And this person asks, one, what do you think of the Melier? Am I saying that right? I had to have it because it's similar to my name. Um, I really like it to the point that I can't, I don't wanna get one right now because the one that I'd want would be the Emprunt Noir and not the monogram, only because I feel like I have enough monogram at the moment and I'm just really digging the Emprunt Noir. Um, but I like it enough that the Henry Bendel bag that I'm going to get today is very similar to it. So I'll show you that later. It doesn't have the zippers on the side, but and I wonder about the zippers on the side. It seems to me like it wouldn't be very functional, especially on the canvas bag because it would be stiff and kind of hard to get into. But I'm curious what y'all think. I know that Lisa Lily MLV is gonna be watching this and she just bought one. So I'd love to hear what you think about those pockets, Lisa. <clears throat> question two, and the person who asked the question, M. Lee MCD, if you could tell us about those pockets, I'd be curious. Your question too, do you think wallets have to match? I thought about getting one to match, but I love my monogram zippy. My Melier is black, by the way. Oh, you have the one I want. Um, yeah, that's gorgeous. So, the no, I don't think the wallets have to match. I like to be matchy-matchy. So my favorite Louis Vuitton print, besides Emprunt, my favorite of the three canvases is the Damier Ben. But I chose to get monogram for all my SL, SLGs. So those all match. Um, but they don't necessarily match the bag that I'm carrying. What I figured is I can't afford to buy the SLGs in all the different patterns, so I would just get the classic monogram, and that would work with any of the Louis Vuitton bags that I carry, and with other bags that I carry too, a black bag like I'm getting today, or a brown bag, or whatever. Um, I figured that would work with all of them. But yeah, I think, um, let's see, you said your monogram zippy, yeah, that would, that would work great with your Melier because it still has the monogram print on it and that matches. And yeah, I think that looks great. Okay, so because this Q&A was so long, I've decided to split it up into two videos and maybe even more, I don't know, we'll see, but I'm thinking just two for right now. Um, so I wanted to do this little close so bye guys, have a fantastic day. I'll see you next time and stay tuned for the second half of the Q&A.